This is BenQ latest Pro Designer Display PD2706UA. It is unique because this is BenQ first Pro Designer Displays that they ship with an ergo arm. So instead of a desktop stand, what you simply do is clamp the arm on a desktop or countertop, freeing up desktop space so you can be even more creative and it also gives the display the ability to move around in a way how it's not easily done if you have a desktop stand. So I'm going to unbox this, show you what comes in the box, set this up, and then I'll give you my first impression of this display and also the new mounting mechanism, BenQ Ergo Arm, and share with you my thoughts about it. Let's find out. This is Artist Right. For full disclosure, I am BenQ Global Ambassador for the Pro Display lineup. This would be their SW Hardware Calibrated Display line for photographer and this PD Pro Designer Display lineup. As usual, BenQ have sent me this unit to do an unboxing and review. All the opinions you're about to hear about this display and any other reviews on my channel are always going to be my own. A few things to note about this display is that it is 27 inch and one thing that I already mentioned in the introduction that makes this unique is that it comes with what BenQ called the ergo arm, hence the A in the naming. It also has a U denoting that this is a 4K UHD that is 3840 by 2160. It also has a really good coverage for P3 color gamut, 95%, which also means that you will get 100% sRGB and Rec. 709 coverage as well. So it pretty much trickles down that way. Out of the box, because this is BenQ Pro Display lineup, you're going to get a Delta E guarantee of less than three. Most of the time, it's actually even less than two on these PD displays, and I unboxed plenty of these and seen the report. A few other things to note is that it has USB-C with 90 watt power delivery. It can also work as a KVM switch, and you can also do picture by picture, picture in picture, all these things you can normally do on all these creative displays. So let's unbox this and see what comes inside the box. And a few things that we get once we open the display up is the very first thing, which is the individual calibration report. This tells you your display serial number. It tells you the Delta E measurement. And on this display, the average Delta E is 1.2. So like I said, most of the time when it comes to PD display, even though they guarantee that the Delta E is less than three, most of the time it's going to be less than two. In fact, I haven't unboxed any PD display from BenQ that has a Delta E above two. I'll simply put it that way. So these are two page calibration report from the factory. And another thing about this PD lineup as well is that BenQ have also applied their latest uniformity calibration technology from the factory to this panel too. A couple of regulations documentation. There is a cover for the back of the panel. This is important, especially if you're mounting this on your table. So this way you can cover and hide all the cables. So we'll set this aside. And there's also a little cover there. So with this, what we do get is the ergo arm. This is the one that we are going to be mounting this on the table with. So let's pull this out to give you an idea of what the ergo arm looks like. All right, so this is pretty much the ergo arm. You have the mounting for the table on the bottom there so you can screw and unscrew this, tighten it. There's also a way to change the some of the tension as well. So there's Allen screws you can raise and lower these depending on your table width or your counter width and so forth. This is pretty much the arm where the display would go into. Again, really good design. We're gonna mount this onto my table and see how this all works. And as usual with BenQ Pro Display lineup, what you do get is a hotkey puck. This is their generation two. So this comes with all the latest PD and also SW display. That's kind of what it looks like there. I'll talk about this a little bit more in the full review. What you also have here, this is the part that goes on the display. So this is the mount to the display. So this will clip onto the back of the display itself. And then this part will go onto the ergo arm. Cables that you do get is a USB type A to USB type B. This is 3.0 uplink cable. You also get a USB type C to USB type C. You also get a full display port to full display port. I don't think I've ever seen a full display port to full display port shipped with BenQ PD line display before. I could be wrong, but this is the one that comes with this. So for PC users, especially if you need display port, the full size on both ends, you have that covered. It also comes with HDMI port as well, and also a power cable. So the usual things that comes with 
all these pro display lineups. All right, let's go beyond the first layer and this is our display. So what I'm gonna do, normally I would lift this up and mount it onto a desktop stand, but because there is no desktop stand, what I'm going to do is move this around a little bit, set up the stand on my table first, and then afterwards, what I'll then do is take the display out. This way I don't damage the display in the setup process. And that's a good idea for you to actually also adopt as well. So let's get that set up. To set up the ergo arm, I am going to refer to the quick start guide because the process of setting this up is a little bit different than other BenQ displays that I've actually unboxed before. A few things to note is that you have this clamping mechanism going, so you would just pretty much tight this and this would clamp and create a pressure on a countertop or on a tabletop that you would use. On this as well, it also comes with an Allen wrench and two Allen screws. On the back, you can see that there are definitely two different screw patterns that you can use. And this would ultimately depend on your table thickness. So you can certainly accommodate for a thinner table or a thicker table or countertop as well. And that's the reason why they designed those screw patterns. So simply enough, what I'm going to do is because I have a table set up that's a little bit thicker, I'm going to simply use the setup that I have right now. I'll unscrew this and what I'm simply going to do is bring this in from the other end. All right, so I'm on the thicker end of things. I'm gonna slide that in right there and pretty much from the bottom of the table, what I'm gonna do is tie the clamp in. A few things to note about the ergo arm is how you can mount this. If you have a standalone table or countertop like I have right now, simply enough, you can just use one of the edges, put this on the edge and just clamp that in. It is that simple. However, if you have a table or countertop that already have a hole pre-drilled to it for all the cables and power to go through, this can also work on those holes as well. What you would simply do is use the Allen wrench that comes with it, remove the plate that is the clamp, simply enough, thread this through the hole and just pretty much go under the table, put that plate back in and then now you can use the main clamp again to clamp this onto your table. So a couple of flexibility options there, let's say if you have something that is against the wall but there's already a hole there on the table, you can certainly use it in that way as well. So now we're ready to take the display out and put it on the ergo arm. It also comes with this part and I'll show you right now how this goes on the display. But simply enough, there's a part that goes out there on the bottom and pretty much it just goes on the ergo arm like that. All right, let's open the display box up one more time. So right there, what you can do is just simply split there. There are two little tabs on the very top. What you would simply do is angle the tab in that just pretty much snaps into place just like so. And from this point, you can just take out the display. Something to note is that this can be a little heavy, so just be careful when you pull this out of the box. All right, simply enough, I have this. What I'm gonna do is just pretty much thread that down onto the ergo arm, and that's pretty much it. This is now set up. So this is the PD2706UA on the ergo arm. You have a lot of dexterity with this. I mean, you can literally rotate this 360. If you have a standalone table like I have right now, you can see what I'm really doing to this display at the moment. It can come out further. You can also collapse this back so that it gives you a little bit more table space to work. So there's different ways of really working with this. You can also rotate the display into a portrait mode just as simple as that, and you can see that right now. This display is already in the portrait mode. Rotate it horizontal. As I've showed you before, if you take a look at the arm there, this arm is now folded. I can pretty much bring it much closer to me. I can also angle this up and down. So I mentioned this before that you do get a lot more angles to work with this display than you would normally on a desktop mount. The other thing that you can also do with ergo arm is that it also goes up and down as well. So for instance, if you go into a sitting posture, you can simply bring the display down when you're standing up, you can do that. And if you want to make it convenient for you to really work standing up, well, just simply angle the display up and you can now just type like so. What I'm gonna do now is take out my Mac. We're gonna link this up and I'll also show you the cable management on this ergo arm as well, which I think is also really neat. A few things to note about the ergo arm once you have the display on it. So before you take it for a spin or anything like that, I would probably lock this portion of the arm into the main ergo arm first. Right below here, there is a little flip that you can actually do that and there's a little hand tightened screw that you can just tighten that in. 
so that the display doesn't come off from the arm. If you want to remove the display at some point, that's not really a problem. Just simply loosen this screw and now you can lift the display up again. Connectivity wise for this display, what you do get is a full display port, an HDMI and also USB type C that will provide 90 watts of power to the computer. Beyond that, on the very bottom, what you also get as well is a connection so that you can connect the hotkey puck. Although having things off the table is really nice, you don't have to use the hotkey puck with this specific display. But if you want to, you can simply just run the cable there. And also you can run the cable through the ergo arm, which I'm going to show you that in just a moment. There is a USB type B uplink cable. This is to use with any KVM function. So you can use this to control two separate computers based on input. Um, we'll probably do another separate video talking about that. There's two USB type A 3.0 and also on the right side of the screen, what you also have is a USB type C, USB type A and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack out. There's the power button, a little joystick back there so you can do different type of controls and also two extra control buttons. Now, one of the things that I point out is that it also comes with a plate to cover that because Let's face it, if you're using this in your office and you don't have anything to cover that, I mean, the cables are really going to show. So we're going to talk about running the cables on here in just a moment. A few other things to note as well is that this arm does rotate as well on the base. So it's not just pretty much an arm fixed in one position. And what you can simply do to run the cable and to cable manage is just push this back and it's magnetically pulled into place. I mean, that's really nice right there. And this is pretty much how that backs look like. So there's all these little grooves that will hold the cable in place. In fact, let's run these two cables up this arm right now. And another thing that you can do is you can thread the cable through the little hole there that there is an arm so that the cable doesn't pretty much dangle or go everywhere. So another nice uh, thing that BenQ have actually come up with. So we're going to plug these two in. And for now, I'm just going to run this setup without the hotkey puck. But with this back cover, what you would simply do is there's our little, uh, I would say like groove there. What I would do is just pretty much put that in, line them up, push them up. And just like that, this just pretty much snap into place. And this is how you have a really nice clean backing. What you can also do as well, if you have Velcro, you can certainly Velcro this to the arm, but I would just leave it as so and just pretty much thread these cable down. And the cable just come up on the bottom. Simply enough, just put this back onto the Erco arm like that, and it just snaps into place. Really nice, really clean. You only see a little bit of cable on the side there. And like I said, if you don't like the cable dangling right there, what you can do is simply just use a Velcro and you can Velcro that portion together if you like. But leaving it some room like this is actually also a good thing because you want to give this a little bit more slack. Like right now, I didn't give this that much slack. So I'm going to go and give this a little bit more slack before we go on. Because it is fairly tight in here once you have that lock in. So that will probably be one thing to note when I'm setting this up or if you're setting this up yourself is I would extend the display out all the way. So you can see there are little two portions there on the arm. I would extend this out all the way and make sure that the cable that you're using can reach both of these. In fact, what I'm probably going to do later on is I'll Velcro this to this portion. I wish there was a little like more um, cable management just like right under this portion that allows you to pretty much just like tie the cable down here, that would have been great, but it's not, you know, the end of the world. All right, so this is the panel. This is the PD2706UA. A few other things to notice that there's no BenQ branding on the very bottom, and this is pretty much in silver, unlike the other BenQs that were just in black, but I think this is adding a really nice touch to the display. They also have a little warning in the very top there saying that do not tear. So pretty much there is a little thin layer that you may think is the display cover. It is not. There is really no display cover. So don't be ripping anything off the display because you are going to damage it. All right, I'm going to turn this display on and we'll put it back here just like so. And I'll have a USB type C running from my laptop to the display.
So right now is defaulting to DisplayPort. Let's we'll see if I can change this to USB-C. All right, there you have it. This is now linked up to my Mac and it's also charging my Mac up at the very top as well. So we can see there that it is charging up the battery at a moment with 90 watts of power. A few things I wanna note about the 90 watt power delivery and I know many of you have this question. So simply put, this will charge your laptop just fine. I have currently the M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you have the M2 Max, this would be the same story or if you have the M2 Pro, this would all be the same story as well. Yes, even though these computers, especially the 16 inch one ships with a 140 watt power supply, the 90 watt power will certainly charge the machine when idle. If you're running the machine hard and you're using a lot of power, it might just supply the power to the machine, but not really charge up the battery. So there are some compromise there. And if you're really pushing the machine hard in long duration, what it might simply do is that it might also drain your battery a little bit as well while it's actually using all those power. But the chances of it running your machine dry in that duration is probably less likely to happen. So even though it may not be as high as Apple power adapter, it's going to do the job just fine. The reason why Apple designed a really high wattage for those power adapter is so that you can use the machine and also you can fast charge it and everything. You're not going to gain all those functions using this one simple cable, but it does offer you a lot of convenience. So that's a few thoughts on the power delivery for this machine. But so far, this is uncalibrated out of box. It looks pretty good. I really like the ergo arm that BenQ have designed. It makes moving this around on the table easily enough. And what you can also do is run your computer in clamshell mode, or better yet, if you have a little table or something that you can put your computer or your little desktop Mac Studio under, I think this would be the perfect combination for any Mac users, especially desktop one. If you can hide the desktop, put it in a corner somewhere or put it under a table, that's the way how I have run my setup. And you can just have this display that looks really nice and clean on the tabletop without having anything on there. And you can just have more space to really work. And like I said, you can really push this back. You can bring this up front. I really like this ergo arm design a lot. So if this is something that you're looking for, a lot more flexibility in the workspace, I think that this display is definitely going to be the one that you may want to consider with this ergo arm. So what I'm going to do is I'll be testing this and then I'll be doing a full review of this display soon. If you have any questions you want answer or anything you'd like to know about this specific model or the ergo arm, leave them in the comment section below and I will try to address that in my full review. For now, any questions or comment, as usual, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell renew. And in art we trust.